Hey there everyone, we're back with a different game, Pillars of Eternity, and I got this, the definitive edition on Steam, and just listen to the soundtrack already. I've fallen in love with other games similar to this, like Baldur's Gate and Divinity Original Sin, and this has just kind of been on my list to play, so I thought, why not now? Alright, so I'll, I might skip a lot of the character creation, I'll just edit it out, but trust me, stuff like this takes me like two hours. Um, okay, so I've done a lot of games like this. I would prefer to play it on normal, but then uh, the only reason why I'm doing probably, mm, I don't know. Let's do normal. I am used to games like this. Forgives a few mistakes. Easily forgives mistakes in combat. No, let's go with normal. It's much more fun. I like having to strategize a little bit. I'm used to games like this already. Like, this is this is my vein. <sighs> Obsidian Entertainment presents... Another masterpiece. I've heard great things about Pillars of Eternity. Oof. And I'm so excited because they also have another game. They have the uh, Dead Fire, the second one. Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Beautiful. And if you're a fan of voice actors from Critical Role, like if you're a D&D &D nerd like me, a lot of these voices you will recognize. It, it, I'm just so excited to play this, finally. Finally after all this time. Okay, well, I'm gonna go with female, because I am female. Um, usually for the race, every time I play something for the first time, I don't know what it is. I always go human and then I end up going either dwarf or, or elf and these are like the basics, right? So I'll go with a human just because I feel like they have, I don't know, in games like this there's a lot of versatility to them, usually. So human first. I don't know what resolve means here. Internal drive, determination, fearlessness, emotional intensity. That's very relatable. Might. Physical and spiritual. I need to I need to make this text larger. I'm blind. Um uh, brute force. Okay, that, that works for me. Meadow folk. Most common humans in the dry dryer dryer wood. <laughs> Meadow folk or Thryton. They lived in that area for almost two thousand years. Meadow folk traditionally live at the edges of of elven forests working the open plains, hence their name. Most humans in Dryerwood are Thryton. Thyrton? Thyrton. Thyrton? Fighting spirit. Once per encounter, five seconds after being reduced below 50% endurance, folk temporarily gain bonuses to accuracy and damage. Ocean folk. Calabandra originated near the equator on the other side of the globe and are currently the most widespread human group in that region but they have also migrated to the far reaches of the world. Ocean folk are the dominant culture in the Valian Republics, also common in the Direwood. Hmm. Okay, they kind of have the same, the same fighting spirit, so all of them have this fighting spirit. Savannah, south of the equator, with the exception of some groups that migrated north, have remained in the same location for over 10,000 years. The name Natlin? literally means original, while common, uh, quite common in reed service. Savannah folk are not usually seen in the Darwood. I'm kind of liking the meadow folk, just because they are closely 
uh, living with the elves, so they might be a little bit more tolerant. I don't know. Maybe. Okay, now this is where um, I'm going to struggle with. Okay, I'm not really a barbarian person, but I do see some classes here that are not quite common, like this. A chanter. And this... This kind of looks like a bard. Magical phrases. Hmm. Spoken. Yeah, spo this is like spoken magic. Would this be considered like a bard? Kind of reenactment. Storytellers and researchers. Ah, yes. Mm, that's, inter that's interesting for me. Then there's Cypher. Brish <laughs> Brishalwin? Mind hunters? That sounds interesting. Directly contact and manipulate another person's soul and psyche. Oh. Oh, this actually is quite interesting, too. So this is like a... It's kind of in the same vein as Pathfinder and D&D, &D, but, I, you know, it has its own lore, its own mechanics, its own world, so it'd be really interesting to learn it, especially since, so, yeah, there's the second game, and then there's also a vow that's supposed to be coming out sometime this year. Um, same, same world, so I wanted to get into the lore already before that game comes out. I'm kind of liking Druid. Only because I never play one. Almost never. And then there's what I, I like. And just because it usually has really, really cool um, animation would be monks just because they get to fight with their fist. unarmed attacks but the one problem is yeah like i had a i had a monk in diablo and you're basically just like your fists and a staff it's pretty limiting in what what weapons you can wield paladin priest now nah, i'm not gonna go priest what i'm leaning towards and wizard is such a like it's usually like one of the last things i try in any game just because wizards tend to be op so i don't know i'm the ones that gravitate towards more are rangers, bard-like characters. This just seems crazy. This also looks like it'll be a little bit difficult, especially since I'm not I'm not familiar with how how this this world works. Or monk. Unpredictable bunch may not be entirely sane. <laughs> People don't know what to make of us. We're hella weird. That's basically what it's saying. People think you're weird and crazy. I kind of like that. <laughs> ah, the decisions, decisions. I probably want to try Monk, to be honest. It's because people think I'm weird. Let's go with the weird one. Let's go Monk. Could I choose any of these? Oh, Swift Strike. Oh, let's look. Monk abilities cover an array of effects to bolster the effect of their melee attacks. Protect the monk from afflictions or turn the tables on attackers. Most monk abilities are powered by wounds, but some simply have per encounter or per rest use. Swift strikes, the monk's hands become a frenzied blur of attacks, increasing their attack rate for a brief period. Requires one wound and speed instant. The wounds are like my actions, I guess. Or, let me see. Powered by wounds, okay. Whoa, 25% attack speed for 10 seconds. Or, torments reach this ability, exploits the shared bonds of universal suffering between all beings. Initial target is hit with a powerful blow that does additional crush damage. Enemies in a cone behind the target suffer crush damage and have their might reduced. This seems... Why wouldn't you pick this? It's more than one enemy. Two meters. 135 degree cone. Yeah, th for anyone that's like not used to reading stuff like this, I can see how complicated it would be. I'm gonna go with Torment's Reach just because it's... 
It's crush damage, which sounds good to me. Okay. Might... Ah, and I think it goes with my race that I have a uh, plus already on might. Resolve. What does resolve do? Concentration? Ah. Okay, I'm not gonna go for a tanky, but I, I do need... I do need something, so... How many? I have 15 points. I could actually disperse them evenly along here, but... I know me, and I know I like perception because I also like to see things. So I'm gonna probably try and spread it across these four. I don't need to be smart, I'm a monk. Let's put, like, at least two points in perception. Because, I don't know. I want to be able to to see things. Unless I have a party, maybe they can see things for me. Observe and comment about their appearance and there's something happening in the background. See, I feel like that's important, no matter what. Do I want to be tankier or do I want to be faster and stronger? Faster and stronger. I don't even know how I'm building this. I don't play monks often. I had one in Diablo, and it it's not really like this at all. Mm. Stronger. And faster. <laughs> yeah, let's go with this. I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm gonna regret the constitution. You know what, let's... Let's remove the perception. There. Tja! That's probably terrible, but you know what? It's fine. Oh wait. Next. Uh, culture. Oh gosh. The Adir. The Adir Empire is currently the largest and most powerful force in the, this part of the world. It is centered around the equator and has a tropical climate. Though the Empire has colonies in numerous areas of the world, Greater Adir is at its heart and houses the majority of its human and elven nations. I get an extra resolve. I want whatever gives me like more- oh yeah, this is how I'm gonna pick. <laughs> Deadfire Archipelago, consisting of the nation of Naasitak, dozens of own- oh my goodness, Omao? Settlements and hundreds of lawless pirate infested islands that stretch along the southern sea. Deadfire is home to boreal dwarves. Oh, I can't. I, I need to hear this. Aumawa and a mixed variety of other races. Deadfire Archipelago is the last stop for anyone headed east. A multitude of monstrous sea creatures infest the ocean beyond, making travel virtually impossible. Yeah, I use more complicated words. Ixamidal Plains? Located to the northeast of Air Glanfath, the Ixamidal Plains are a large expanse of fertile savannas that are extensively farmed by humans and Orlan residents. The Ixamidal is it a tea? Yeah, the culture is one of the oldest in the world, though one of the least imperialistic, having spread out little over the past several thousand years. Please grade me on how well I'm pronouncing these, <laughs> these adventuring words. Old Vi... without ever hearing it once. Old Vilia, once the crown jewel of the southern seas, Old Vilia is now the crumbled remnants of an empire of warring merchant nations. Counting many humans and dwarves among their ranks, the old Valian countries are still forces to be reckoned with and are proud of their rich culture, cultural heritage. No, why are these so difficult? Ugh. Role-playing names. Rao Tai? Ra Ra Rao uh, Tai. Rao Tai. Dominated by the Aoma uh, nation of <laughs> the Gulf of Celsius. Hosted a number of nations, most of them Aomawa. Orlan and Dwarven. Though those countries are relatively young, there are some of the most advanced colonial settlements in the east. The Gulf is a land of riches and resources for those who can take them, though the entire coast is often pummeled by violent storms. That sounds terrible. No wonder you have a constitution plus one. You're getting ravaged by nature. 
I don't need intellect. What I need is more might. <laughs> the Living Lands is the mountainous region of a large northern island renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. Its weather is unpredictable and its ecosystems vary dramatically from valley to valley. The Living Lands are home to an assortment of races in a variety of colonial and in independent settlements. This is looking good for my extra might. I'm going to be super strong. The White That Wends. A large cracked southern expanse of polar ice, the White That Wends, is home to pale elves and small colonies of daring explorers, outcasts, and adventurers. While virtually no plant life grows in the White, it is home to many hardy species of dangerous animals that forage from the sea or prey upon each other to survive. This sounds the coolest. I don't know, there's something about like the the mountain folk that just live in in tundras and snowy areas. But we're gonna go with living lands because look at that, might 17. <laughs> uh, oh, oh my gosh, sir. I, okay, I guess these are like the 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 stats that fall under the other ones as well. Colonists. Part of a group that founded a fledgling colony in a distant land. Do I want survival? The damage reduction. How do you even read this? Ranks grant the following bonuses. Okay, so you go up. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, okay. So it does go up. Explorer. You find the siren call of the horizon irresistible. You cannot help but wonder what lies beyond the next hill or wave, and you've built your life around finding out. Lore and survival. What does lore give me? Oh, it's like, okay, so it's basically just scrolls. So it's pretty, pretty, you know, standard. Like it's, it's the knowledge from a different gaming platform can, you know, translates well over here. Life has been spent in the study of your craft. You trained and prepared, hoping to hone your skills and ply your trade. This sounds more in line with being a monk. Athletics. Traps and locks, though. I don't know. That doesn't sound very... Oh, yeah. Drifter. Do I want to be that type of monk? Stealth survival. Ooh, what about mercenary? A mercenary monk sounds kind of cool. Blade and battle is your way of life. You solve your problems by pulling out your weapon, which are my fists. Let me pull out my fist and applying force. <laughs> I don't think I'm a scientist. I don't know. Like I'm just for roleplay background. I I'm more into being either an explorer or a mercenary, just because of the way these two work. Is that they do travel quite a lot. So I'll go with mercenary because I like that you pull out your weapons and they just happen to be fists. Here you go. Appearance! You know, I'm fine with... I'm not a fan with this portrait though, because it doesn't look like a monk. Let's look for... she looks monk-like. Oh there, monk. You'll never know. So even if I change my appearance, super mysterious. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm good with that. You can barely see your face anyways. I can't even zoom in. I can't, I can't, I can't see... oh, she looks mad. She looks friendly. You know, it kind of looks good, like that. You know, I'm just gonna go with this. I'm sorry. Like, I usually would spend more time on this. Oh, the hair I can see, though. So, I'll be mostly looking at her hair from the back or side. So, let's pick something that's not too crazy. Because this, at least, I could see. Why is the game freezing, though? Ooh. No, I want a ponytail. I'm a monk. Yeah, like that. That's too high of a ponytail. It's a little crazy. Oh, this like my hair right now. Alright, I like this. Oh? Leading the way. Let us end this! Quickly and quietly. Well? 
I like this, this now senator. Now I am leader of the group. <laughs> Not a sound. Ooh, I like that. Hmm? Watch and learn. The game for oh, goodness, this game does not. You like better to. run. Mm-hmm. I'm flattered. Okay, I'm gonna take benevolent. Enter name. Let's just make it me. All right. Good job. We're done. Caravan Master Odema. The Caravan Master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you are planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods towards a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who would be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight everybody stays put, and in the morning we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the cavern master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle round here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case you'll be dead in a day. I need water. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink, called a springberry, about the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. Oh, great. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker, but see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Okay, so a demo looks. I wish they like allowed me to click into this. Looks at his, at his assistant, a lanky, intense man named Sparfellow, carries an old sun-bleached bow. And he nods in my direction. Sparfell nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. Where do I find these berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here. Kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Mm. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. What are those Nothing ruins? you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay, if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Mm, who did build the Got ruins? different names for them. Settlers called them Ingwithans. Nobody that yes. liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. I'm assuming it is dangerous out here. Not if you hurry about your business. <laughs> and not if the weather holds up. There is concern in his tone, but he does not elaborate. The weather... This time of year? Rain, mostly. And wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here, time to time. Locals call it a beowick. Born out of the ether. The spirit's path. Never seen it myself. Never care to. Uh, what are these huge rocks coming out of the ground? They don't got Audra where you come from? Audra? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like yes. tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. Okay. I'll go see about those berries then. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without a blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! 
the woman looks up on her own time. Oh, I guess there's no voice for this. She needs to find some spring berries. Watch that she doesn't drop dead. No promises. Oh, she's probably like a barbarian. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. <laughs> Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. He casts a sidelong glance at her. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the man. Let's get mm. going before you keel over. All right, I got two people. Um... Okay, so space is to pause the game. At once. How do I move? Because I removed the scroll option. Like, how do I move the map, I mean? Uh, hold on. Maybe that is the best way. But I'd rather WASD. I don't like this scrolling like this. Is there another option? <laughs> um, ah, hash speed is S, that's why. You know what, we'll keep the scrolling. Slow mode activated, no. Toggle intera- oh, highlight interactables is tab. There you go. This makes things- uh, Makes things so much easier. All right, let's go. Oh, there's a there's a thing I can look at there. Up here, then. I can't go there. Maybe down. Ah, yes, down. Anyone there. need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. Do I even have money for supplies? Do I speak to you? There. You see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It's covered with uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. I say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Yeah, let's see what you've got. What have I got? A pledge. Right-click for details. A ring. Gon's pledge. What's this? More endurance. It grants me a shield and a mi miniature space piglet? This tiny titanic pig is an otherworldly appearance that seems to be at odds with its endearing behavior. It follows you dutifully and requires nothing in return save companionship. I have a tiny little pig. I don't need a weapon. I use my fists. Am I wearing armor? How do I check if I'm wearing... What am I wearing? Am I wearing clothes? Journal, map... Ah, I am wearing clothes. Padded armor. Something else you need? I am wearing padded armor. Would it be the same as- <gasps> No! I don't have money for that. Nope. Oh no. Put that back. That's expensive. Oh, I can zoom out. Could I steal this? Ah! <gasps> I think I stole that, but it's okay. They're traveling with me anyways. They don't need it. I need it. I'm basically dying. Who be you? I'll have your water soon enough. Stream's not going anywhere. What's this? I'm looking for a bush. Bush. That looks like a bush. Is this what I need? I don't know. 
The path winds through a narrow canyon back the way you came. We shouldn't stray too far. Okay, sorry. Let's check by those outcroppings. Ah! <gasps> a wolf. How do I control each person? Possible real time. Okay. Sure. We'll just click and see what happens. Okay, one of your characters has been engaged in melee. When characters are engaged, they immediately stop moving. If they move again, they will provoke a disengage attack from the enemies engaging them. Your characters will also automatically engage enemies against them with melee weapons. But how do I... I have a strange illness. Help me. All characters in the game, friend and foe, have four primary defenses against attack. Deflection, fortitude, reflex, and will. These defenses are based on characters' attributes, level, items, blah 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 yeah. If accuracy is below the target's defense, the attack suffers a penalty to the roll and is more likely to result in a miss. If accuracy is above the target's defense, the attack is more likely to result in a crit. Great. All attacks that do damage have to overcome the target's damage reduction. An enemy's DR reduces the incoming damage by the listed amount. So it's like your AC. Or your difficulty rating. Okay. DR. Damage reduction. Difficulty rating. Goodness, that is loud. One moment. I need to adjust this sound. It was very, very loud. Let's keep this at 70, but maybe just reduce everything else. Yeah. Easy peasy. I scored a crit. How do I make this bigger? Okay. I need it like the text bigger, though. This is this the bush. Is I got the bush. You look like you've seen your share of action. What do you do before you came here? Ah. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll be honest. I was a blade for hire. Yeah? How is it that you happen to come here? Ah. Uh, got a lot of debt. No, no, no. Ah, here. Let's just say I don't have the most sparkling of reputations at home. Here, I'm anonymous. Well, we've all got things we'd like to leave behind. Gods know I do. I'll tell you that. Here's hoping they never track us down. Kaliska breathes in her surroundings. It's been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Rhetoric's offer it makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You're here to settle like the rest of the lot? It's hard. It's a hard offer to pass up. You won't find many offers like it in these parts, believe me. Got some big plan in store? Uh... Getting filthy rich. <laughs> I'm gonna settle here, start a new life. Well, who knows? Redrick pays well enough, maybe we'll end up neighbors. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. Odin will give me a earful. Let's be on our way. Why are you here? Kaliska sighs unevenly. Her eyes search the ground for her at her feet. My sister moved out here some time back. She sent me a letter. She seemed worried. But that's how she always is. This time, though, she asked me to come out. And that's got me a little worried. I haven't seen her in ages. Been doing guide work in Ixamitl. But I'll do anything for her. She's, well... She's a much better woman than me, so I'm here, and we'll see. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> I've got simple needs. I like open skies and far horizons. I find work that, leads, that lets me live that way. My family wanders too. We started in Direwood, but my parents ended up in the Living Lands. I've got a brother in Ra Rawatai. 
<laughs> and another in Adir. My sister in Gilded Vale. She's the only, only real homebody. Um, what can you tell me about Direwood? Not much for history, but from what I know, it used to be part of the Adir Empire. Broke off after a war some years back. The locals here are feisty, and that's how they like it. Alright, let's get back to camp. Oh wait, I've been out of touch, but I've been hearing weird ki thing, kinds of things about it lately. People having trouble giving birth. I guess a lot of them. Been going on for years now, but somehow it's getting worse. With an uneasy tremor her voice, in her voice she adds, I'll have to ask my sister more about it. Alright, let's get back to camp then. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfell's getting you water anytime soon. He does what he feels like, when he feels like it. We should check up on him first. Slap him around a little. Stream's just down that way. Come on, let's get you your water in dialogue. What a true friend. I like her already. I really want to use WASD. Is there like a another way to do this? What's this? Burned lady. Oh, that's how to select more. You know, I'm gonna fix this. I fix the WASD thing because I don't know who uses arrows. I truly don't. Could I just get water like this? How do I get my own water? It's like right here. At this point I'm just exploring though. Oh, there's things. Travelers maybe are looters or bandits. Bad sign. Any way you figure it. Well, either way, I'm taking what they have. The corpse is cold to the touch and a ripe smell wafts from it in putrid, wa putrid waves. A dark crusted bloodstain besmirch its simple linen clothing. Spooky. Alright, let's talk to this Parfell guy. And if he doesn't have my water, at least this stream is right here. Is there like a way I can just like run a little faster? Come on, ladies. Oh wait, the guy's here. Oh, where'd he go? If you ever get stuck, open it up to review your notes. What is that? Formation. Journal. Find Sparfell. Oh, we actually have to find him. Sparfell, where did you go? Did you go up here? Maybe you went upstream. The liar it didn't even get me my water. Let's cross this bridge. What a surprise! Sparful went hunting. At least he left the water skins. Come on. You crouch at the river bank and dip your water skin into the cool water while Kaleska waits nearby, keeping watch. As you rise, you notice her look up sharply towards the tree line. You gain an item, full water skin, added to the stash. Out of the trees emerges Sparfell, one of the guides barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow, and there's a strangeness to his gait, his stride wobbly as he moves towards you with labored breath. Sparfell, are you all right? Kaliska frowns. Sparfell's toe catches on a rock, and he collapses forward in a heap, the feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. Oh, damn. Sparfell! Ambush! Aw. Oh. Okay, let's get rid of that. Um. Oh, oh, here are the abilities. 
you knock down. Can I plan these? I can. And then I cannot. Oh, I have to cause a wound, I think. Let's both wail on this dude. What you yeah. need? <clears throat> Sometimes a weapon or simply. Uh, a weapon or spell simply isn't well suited to penetrating an enemy's damage reduction. When the attack hits, the DR will wipe out all but a small percentage of the incoming damage. You'll hear your characters complain about it when it happens. Take heed. Note the damage type that's being blocked and switch to a weapon or spell that does a different damage type. It's so hard to tell. I'm oh. We killed him. Girl. Let's wail on this dude now. Don't you? I want to use my ability. Oh, I can't use it. Oh. What a weakling. Weak ambush. On, we have to get back to camp. Wait, I have to loot them. Do we take Sparfell with us? Or no? Here. Okay. Poor Sparfell. Certainly. There's gonna be a, like a full-on battle happening here, for sure. <gasps> there is girl. Knock back. Knock down this dude. Ooh, maybe I can get this dude. Oh no. no, no. Oh god, is this Kaliska? This is Kaliska. Girl, you gotta get here quickly. I am too nimble. Mm -hmm. Nope. Disengage. I shouldn't have done that. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Could I use this? Do I use this in myself? Ah, yeah, it's active. <laughs> we need to both be uh, attacking the same dude. He looks like he's almost dead. Okay, it goes pretty quickly. I thought I was the other one. I'm gonna knock this guy down. Ow! Why are they only getting from me? <laughs> that knockdown is great. Let me loot everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Oh wait. I know. I want to loot, loot, loot. At once. Oh! <gasps> everyone is dead. Yes. Oh no. Our merchant. Glan Faithen Leader, all around you lie the massacred remains of other travelers, peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy. Kaliska puts the back of her left hand to her mouth, as if to ward away some poisonous vapor. A handful of dark figures stand above the fallen, treading on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from bodies as if from half-split logs. One of them towering and sever severe with a thick beard tasseled in knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of a man you recognize as Hyoden, the last of your caravan left standing. Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life. For a fight you will lose. Ooh. Oh, I have like an ability here. Lore 1, the ruins has not been sullied by our hands. Men of Ir Glanfath. Your words carry no weight when I have seen the truth with my own eyes. Blood must be paid for this intrusion. You now have one rank. Wait. In a disposition, reputation. These reputations represent how people perceive your personality throughout the world. Even seemingly nasty reputations will be favored by some people, and benign reputations will often bring out the worst in certain people. No disposition is inherently good or bad in Pillars of Eternity. I love that. I love when... 
There's a lot of gray area, but if your main character is a priest or paladin, you must be careful not to misalign their dispositions with what is favored by their deity and order, respectively. For the main character only, their disposition will modify the effects of holy radiance for priests and faith, okay, for paladins. So I say again, lay down your arms. Ah, don't trust them. They mean to kill us all. I mean, I, this guy was part of my caravan, but what is he talking about? You're innocent in this. Will you not listen to reason? Only a fool attacks a weak enemy while a stronger one yet lives. Damn it. I need 14 perception. See, I like having perception. Run the man before he can react. Judging by the string of animal teeth around your neck, I'm guessing you are worshippers of Galloway. If Galloway told you to stop protecting the ruins, would you? Yeah, let's let's logic our way out of this. The man frowns and motions as if if to swing his axe. He then winces, but the blow never comes. Instead, the man cocks his head intrigued. Of course, but he would not. It is by the command of all the gods that we accept this charge. How do you know? Because it's inconsistent with their beliefs, or because it's what you were told? The man glares. It's always been known to my people. I see, and what of Galloway's edict that weakens an age must be purged by youth and strength? You think Galloway would want some moldy, crumbling stone to survive long after the builders have turned to dust? The man's nostrils flare as he fumes. He would not. He told us otherwise. I'm sure he did. Just not you personally. But why would that stop you from killing innocents? Distracted, the man's grip falters on his axe handle, and he nearly fumbles it, affording he in the moment he needed to dodge out of his swing, which comes too late. Howling with rage, the man charges you instead. Hidden, get out the way! Ah! Oh, we got hidden? Hell yeah, what is he? <gasps> is he one of the mind people? No, blinding strike. What would this be? What are you? Can I see what what my peoples are? What classes they are? A rogue! Yeah, yeah, get him. Get, get this guy. Get this dude. Yeah, yeah. And then... This is the leader, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knock him down, because that's always fun. And then me being a filthy monk. I'm gonna take out one of the hunters. How can I help? Let's go. Oh. Kaliska, you gotta get in here. This is a dodgy situation. Oh, okay. Gotta get in here, okay? I I know. Okay, wait, wait, no. We're almost done with this guy. I need Hidden to stay alive. He looks like he's handling it well. Okay, now knock him down, please. There we go. Get this one too. Nice group. Nice job, party people. Your enemy lies supine on the ground, unable to rise as companions now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing, fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but the sky above you. Forgive us. That music is so epic. I love this music. Barely audible beneath his choked sighs, a whisper of wind stirs the air. At this, the man's eyes roll back as he closes them. Good, good. The gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. I am ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You could feel it begin to seep beneath your skin, and where it pierces you, it feels as though it is rendering you apart from within. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, oh, sorry about that, uh, slashed across the chest and bowel, Odima's body stirs, and with great effort he raises his sagging head, his eyes barely open. He looks directly at you. Get inside! Run! But all this loot... Oh, shoot, it's the magic wind. Str 
straining against the gale that threatens to pull you off of your feet with every step you set your hands in the worn folds of weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With a last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. Heed and trails behind, slowed by injury and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rocks, one of the fallen attackers who had been feigning death lunges for Hyuden and topples him onto the rocky ground. Restrained, Hyuden lashes out against his fatigued assailant, but struggles to break his old his break his old. Without a weapon in your hands, you can do little to help him from where you stand. Dexterity. Grab a rock and hurl it at the attacker. Let's go. I have some dexterity. Your aim is true and the hit jars Hidden loose. Lurching to his feet, Hidden clambers up the base of the rock. As he nears the top, however, wind flares, pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. But diving up onto the hard rock, you manage to catch hold of it. Securing his other hand, you pull with waning strength, and it feels as though your arms will be jerked from their sockets. They hold just long enough for Hyuden to set his feet and join you on the trembling ledge. Whoa, there is a deep resonance to the swelling wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet and inside the cavity of your own chest, as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new gust menaces the old stones before you, losing connections, unsettling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. Whoa. We've made Was it that? to safety. A Buick. Had to be. Then we're lucky to be alive. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. <gasps> Whoa, we're in a cave now. Alright, so I will save it here. And I will continue on with Pillars of Eternity. So if you do like this game, please give a like and subscribe so that I can keep making more of these episodes because this is totally my kind of game. And I love narrating it and the story seems really amazing. Anyways, thank you all for supporting my channel and I'll see you on the next video. Take care, everyone.